Holy Sabbath, everyone. I'd like to invite everyone for a time of prayer and also for you to be able to present your petitions. And thank you for those who raised your hands. And by the way, is there anyone else? Great. Let's pray for those in uh, various countries who are experiencing the coronavirus, especially the United States. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, we do ask for your prayers. We might not know other people, but we know our Savior knows them. Let us enter into the sanctuary. Our Father who art in heaven, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent, we kneel before you and we give you reverence for the life you've given to us. That as the day begins and the day ends, we ask for your grace and your mercy as we enter the seventh day, your holy Sabbath. Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. Help us to recall the week that we bring our petitions before thee and asking for your grace and your mercy upon every human being. Also, the issue in regards to the Kanoa virus, we ask your blessings on every soul on this earth that you may reach them with the three angels' messages and with the New Star program. Help us to respect what you've given to us, to understand your Decalogue, your statutes, judgments, and precepts, Help us to understand that you have cared for us from the beginning of time to the end. We know that billions of people will be lost and millions will be saved. However, this evening, as we enter to thy sanctuary, into the most holy of holies, we ask for your imputed and parted righteousness upon us. And we ask for your grace upon those who are worshiping this day. Bless the 34 angels' ministries that you go forward throughout the whole world. Bless those who are involved in chaplaincy and prison ministry, that they may be able to present your messages. Be with the leaders, be with the laymen. We ask your blessings for all the pastors in the world, laymen and associate pastors. Be with those in administrative departments in various conferences. Bless them and guide them. May the meditation of my mind be directed by thee that while I am preaching, I am hearing you and listening to you, to the small, still voice. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we enter your Sabbath. Bless us and sanctify us and regenerate our spirit with thy Holy Spirit. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Welcome to the Third and Fourth Angels Ministries. As we contemplate the times that we are living in, those that are able, turn with me to Revelation chapter 13. And our scripture text is found in verse 9. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9. In reading near hearing, if any man have an ear, let him hear. 
Turn with me to the writings, Signs of the Times, January 16, 1891. A connection with the channel of light, who is Christ. How is it possible that we may grow in grace? It is possible to us only as we empty our hearts of self and present them to heaven to be molded after the divine pattern. We may be refreshed with the heavenly dew and have the showers of heaven descend upon us, referring to the early and the latter rain. As we appropriate the blessings of God, we shall be able to receive greater measures of His grace. As we learn to endure as seeing Him who is invisible, we shall become changed into the image of Christ. Amen. Daily worshiping Him. Growing in Him. Learning of Him. The grace of Christ will not make us proud. Number one. Number two. Causes to be lifted up in self. And number three. But we shall become meek and lonely in heart. Our Father who art in heaven, as we open thy word, we ask a blessing on thy reading. For here are the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of Elohim and have the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. As we've entered into a time that has been given to us, and as we notice the topic here, I pray that all is well, that all may see there in the background. If not, let me know. Our topic, Antichrist exalts himself above God. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, we read, Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. In the original writings, the word God is Elohim. The translators change the name to God, which is a genetic, generic word. So it would read, Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Who is this individual, the Antichrist revealed, who exalts himself above Elohim? <clears throat> to make earthly kings his vessels, and earthly thrones his footstool, came far short of the measure of the papal ambition. The popes have planted their foot upon the throne of God himself, that the majesty of Rome should give place to the vice Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. Was but a small matter. The majesty of heaven must descend from his seat that the Pope may mount into it. He is God. Says the apostle in reading your hearing. Sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. This is part of Laudato C. H.R. 9. The Pope. America and prophecy is going full stage at this moment. The Pope has claimed to be God first in words, second in acts, sitting in a temple with two cherubs on the left and on the right, thinking that he's sitting on the mercy seat, which is an abomination to our Father. So as we look at the pictures as a symbolic picture, we also like to help us to be able to expose Revelation chapter 13 so that the reader and the seeker can comprehend and put in the puzzle together. As we view the screen, we like to ask us all to please take notes in our studies. Let us listen to the words the great mouth has spoken, and also to some which his friends have spoken for him, sitting on a throne made by man, thinking that he is God, the vicar of Christ. With the two straps behind his head, one is the information going out to the people from him. The other one that comes up is information coming from his leaders of the world. Let us mark first where Antichrist is said to sit. He sits in the temple of God. This temple cannot be that of the Jews on Mount Moriah. For the apostle is speaking of an act which was to be done by one who was not to appear till after the fall of the Roman Empire. Does anybody remember when, when this occurred? Okay, let us continue. I'll bring it in. But long before the empire fell, the temple of the Jews was laid in ashes. Remember this. And the acts of the Jewish temple is spoken of 25 times. In all these passages, the word used is Iran, Heron, 
never vassal, nassal. The term here used by the apostle is vassal, Christian church, as also uh, Chrysotim, Augustine, and Thomas Aquinas, three writers. Sitting in the temple thinking that he is God, as we look at the screen on the bottom right hand corner. The apostle is speaking of an act which was to be done by one who was not to appear till after the fall of the Roman Empire. This is the fourth empire, the man of sin came into being. Paganism began in BC 158, that's when it started. It, paganism endured 666 years. However, paganism ended in BC 508. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians, if we may. 2 Thessalonians, and we shall seek the scriptures in regards to this matter so that everyone will have their testimony and also a note to be able to share with your neighbor and others who are living near your area. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4 through 8 in reading and in your blessing who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called Elohim Greek number in the lexicon is 2318, 2318. Or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Let us remember. Verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. And this is what we're doing now. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way which is coming. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Can I hear an amen? These, ladies and gentlemen, are the issues that are right before us. However, we, once again, paganism started, the Fourth Empire, it began in 158, and it endured 666 years. There's Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. There's the number. Paganism in this system was so wicked, brothers and sisters, that the man of sin came to the Fourth Empire. After the papal supremacy? No. After the popes had finally agreed, which was many of them, these emperors had finally agreed that one man should stand as the vicar of Christ, as a pope, which was the archbishop of Rome, under the leadership of Justinian I. Paganism ended in 508. And when you add 30 years to that, it brings you to the year 538, Daniel 725. Let it be written, let it be spoken. Here, ladies and gentlemen, we have pictures of various presidents, meaning and being anointed by other denominations who do not even keep the commandments of Elohim, which is an abomination. How, ladies and gentlemen, can we as a people let others try to anoint us when we don't even know of their faith and put their hands on us when we have no idea who they worship, which gods they worship? As the Jews remind us many times as they come from the Middle East, they come to the United States, or we go to Israel, and we share, or we share with each other, they will ask, which God do you worship? Because the United States is known of the country worshiping different gods. Yes, gods. That is a shame and a disrespect to us as Christians. They know not of our faith. The name temple is carried over to the Christian church and in places innumerable in the New Testament, it is used to denote sometimes an individual believer, and sometimes the whole body of professing Christians. Writing to the Corinthian Christians, Paul says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of Elohim? And again, collectively, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Yahweh. So what it's saying, ladies and gentlemen, that we are fitly framed together, various members of the body, but it's the character that's being molded and framed 
and being prepared for the second advent. Can I hear an amen? But in this issue here, ladies and gentlemen, someone else is leading the religious party of all denominations in the world. And to my left, you will see the picture of who I'm referring to. However, we got John Hagee here, and then we also got the symbol of Satanism, and then we got a president and a senator who are under bowls and skulls. We continue. We conclude that the temple in which Antichrist is here seen to sit is the Christian church. Many of them. And they do not even know it. Ladies and gentlemen, this interpretation preserves the unity of Paul's prophecy, Antichrist or Man of Sin, was to be the outcome and head of the apostasy. But the apostasy was to spring up in the Christian church, for the fallen away was to be and only could be a fallen away from the Christian faith. John Hagee supports and emphasizes that we should support Israel, the country of Israel. I don't have no problem with that, as we should support Mexico and their country in evangelizing that country, or support the United States and different states in supporting them in evangelism and Bibles and teaching the correct messages. But the problem with John Hagee, ladies and gentlemen, is this. John Hagee doesn't keep the commandments. Exodus 20, verse 8 through 11, or Exodus 20, verses 1 through 17. And what I am sharing here, ladies and gentlemen, is, is just doodling and, and concrete. It's a fact. Our Savior says that if we, don't, if we love Him, we are to keep His commandments. John 14, verse 15, seven words. If you love me, keep my commandments, plural. And the Ten Commandments are to be respected and to be obeyed. So today is the Fourth Commandment, the Seventh Day, Exodus 20, verse 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor, but the seventh is the Sabbath of the Elohim thy Yahweh. In it thou shalt not do any labor, no buying, no selling. It's the day he blessed and made holy. Ezekiel 20, verse 20. So then why isn't John Hagen, his congregation, his followers out in Texas and around the world, keeping the Ten Commandments? In Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, it says, To the Torah and to the testimony, they speak not according to this word, this word. There is no light in them. That word light is referring to the Hebrew dawn. In other words, the Holy Spirit has not dawned on the person. Now, what I'm sharing here, ladies and gentlemen, is that we're supposed to have the truth and the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So why isn't John Hagee's ministries and others keep not keeping the Sabbath? Why do they go to church on the first day of the week, who gives reverence to the Vatican Church, who gives reverence to the devil. Bottom line, straight fact. And there's much proof and evidence that has been given. This is the problem with him, and this is the problem with George Bush Jr. and the senator. So when George Bush Jr. says, well, my dad has passed away, he's, he's doing better in, in heaven, he's, he's just looking down on us, seeing how we're doing. That is mysticism, that's spiritualism, that is an abomination. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, his dad's asleep until the resurrection, until the second advent. Ladies and gentlemen, this is very bold and very harsh to share this evening. But ladies and gentlemen, I share this kindly with us. That if we're not keeping his commandments, and we're playing right and left, hot and cold, hot and cold, ladies and gentlemen, we're not developing his character and we're not going to be in the kingdom. Our Savior prolongs His time with patience with us. But if we continue to reject present truth, continuing and continuing and continuing, there comes a time in the anatomy physiology of the, of the person and the people that that spirit is taken away. And throughout their lifetime, they will die, but not in Christ. They will die in the world, which is the pupil and the pawn of Satan. In the next few weeks, we will be presenting the state of the dead. They will be very deep in biblical teachings so that many of us will comprehend the state of the dead, spiritualism, and what it's all indicating in these last days, how these evil spirits would be resurrected and showing the character of loved ones. They would be persuading, persuading them to follow these teachings, which is now going on. The falling away was to be and only could be a falling away from the Christian faith. 
In red, it's what it's written here on top, that the Pope has written, and it reads as follows. The distinguishing mark of the Antichrist, man has with infinite termity put himself in the place of God, the substitution of man for God, Pope Pius X. Antichrist, therefore, could sit, that is, establish himself and exercise jurisdiction nowhere but in the professedly Christian church. As a vice Christ, it behooved all his visible characteristics and all his environments to be professedly Christian and ecclesiastical. Pope Pius X. This effectively disposes of all those theories of Antichrist which would find him in some powerful artistic confederacy or in some masterful political chief or other embodiment of monstrous iniquity and tyranny. Yet to arise and which during a brief but terrible career should desolate the world. As many of the bishops of Rome have declared that the Catholic speaking by Donald Trump that is being or going to be held is not being supported nor accepted by the conclave of cardinals. They are not, as they say, a political church. They are a ecclesiastical denomination. But they are not the ones that are supporting the people to support Donald Trump in his second term. Much of this you will see throughout the headlines, throughout the news. Most of all, ladies and gentlemen, the key point that I'm bringing out here is that they have admitted that they are not a political entity. In other words, they're lying. They are a political religious entity or they would not have the power that they have today. Stay with me. In your left hand corner, in the bottom, Jesus Christ, the Savior from sin, the Son of God, the truth. The Antichrist prerequisites are these. He is the son of perdition and he is the liar. This is the conclave of cardinals, this is his government, this is his agenda, this is their leadership, and this is how they work and run the world, ladies and gentlemen, through this religious apostasy system. Papal Rome never fell. Rome, in other words, never fell. It continued through the transition of the rise of the fifth papal supremacy, which was Papal Rome, the Catholic Church, in 538 and received a deadly wound in 1798, Revelation 13, verse 3. The deadly wound, once again, that I've been repeating, was religious liberty that was assigned by a committee of Napoleon, and then it was passed in Italy and France. It became a law that seized and stopped persecution. Persecution seized, and the Pope was taken captive, transferred to various prisons, lived very graciously in prison, and died thereafter. Yet Pius VII continued after him. Yet we understand, ladies and gentlemen, that these issues have taken place, have come to its climax. If for me and others would be very ignorant to not know who the Antichrist has been, and to be listening to all these false preachers on your television and on your radios, that this man of sin is going to come in, he's going to be able to resolve all the problems in the world, etc., that that's going to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. And it's futurism like many of these Jesuits have pretended to share. Petrism, post-trip. Ladies and gentlemen, these are wrong premises. The Antichrist has been here. It's a man. He sheds blood just like you and I do. But the problem is, is that we have not done any small story study in the book of Daniel, Revelation, and 2 Thessalonians and elsewhere to understand who it is. Remember that the issue had already started before Paul passed away. He was already proclaiming it. Now it's come down to us. Now we have the seventh head and the Vatican coming together. That's going to be the seventh head and is of the eighth, who is the devil, that tried to establish his kingdom from Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, paganism Rome, papal Rome, 
atheistic communism that fell in the year 1898, also in 1700s with France. Now we're coming down to the last straw, ladies and gentlemen. 6,000 years is coming to an end. And our Savior is trying to wake the world up. The Cornova virus, it was established in the United States. It was sold to Wuhan, China. And in the laboratory here with the team, they themselves are the ones that released it. When it was released, an individual received it, and the individual died. There have been many studies that have been put out, many, many facts in regards to what has happened, and people in China releasing the information because they have been there, they have experienced it, and they knew what was taking place. Ladies and gentlemen, this coronavirus can be prevented. Number one, keep his commandments, Exodus 20, verses 1 through 17. Number two, repent. Number three, be baptized in the Father, Son, and Spirit of Truth. And number four, obey his commandments. Ladies and gentlemen, if we think for one moment, because we're keeping his commandments, and he said to eat the righteous food and don't eat the unclean, the clean food, don't eat the unclean food, and you will not receive any of his diseases, that's absolutely correct. That's Leviticus chapter, 20, chapter 11. However, if we continue to grow and live and procrastinate and murmur and lie and murmur against each other, those are lies, ladies and gentlemen. Those are sins. They're in a cup that is overflowing with transgression. This country, ladies and gentlemen, is coming into a judgment. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're trying to do this evening is to expose to you who are watching and will be watching who the Antichrist is. He's already presented a Laudato Si. Laudato Si was legislated and the commissions came together in the legis legislative halls and they enacted H.R. 9. And out of Laudato Si came out H.R. 9 in climate change, the weather, earthquakes, fire. That's Matthew 24, verses 6 through 9. We know these things are occurring, ladies and gentlemen, because the scriptures tell us. But we also know that in Revelation chapter 8, verses 10 to 11, that the stars and the moon would fall, etc. These issues would take place. But in the Hebrew, ladies and gentlemen, that word stars is referring to meteors. Meteors. That is expected to hit the earth by 2019. Excuse me. I won't give a date. Not 2019. Therefore, what we're looking at here, ladies and gentlemen, that if it hits 2029, the majority of this earth is going to be doomed. It's like all the nuclear atomic weapons that all these countries have that would be ignited. One third of the water would be bitter. One third of the trees burned. One third of the land, the grass, eliminated. And people. These issues, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm bringing before us, they're facts. And it's coming. In Revelation chapter 8, verses 10 and 11, that's a prophecy that has not been fulfilled, and it will be fulfilled to its letter. And it's coming. It is time now to come into the sanctuary and search for Christ with all your hearts, souls, and minds. Salvation, ladies and gentlemen, is at your doors. In other words, at our frontal lobe, our Savior is knocking by His angels and His Spirit to let Him in, that He may sup with us, that He may heal us of our iniquities, our transgressions, that we may be, may be reconciled back to Him. He cannot, if He wanted to, save us when we are not accepting Him as our personal Savior. He can't do that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to reach out to Him because His hands are stretched out for you in love and He loves you. Once again, this effectually disposes of all those theories of Antichrist which would find Him in some powerful artistic confederacy. This is what it is. Or in some masterful political chief or other embodiment of monstrous iniquity and tyranny. Yet to arise and which during a brief but terrible career should desolate the world. And this is what they're trying to do. Such a power could in no sense 
be said to sit in the temple of God. It would be a power outside the temple and so far from aspiring to office and dignity in the temple, that is in the church, such a power must needs from its instincts and character make war on the church. And the war that's going to be made on the church is referring to a remnant people that keep his commandments and have the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. Under the banner of open hostility and with the cry of Res it, res it, res it. In other words, build it. This is the Antichrist here that takes the seat as a pope. Someone else who he is betraying and following. He has his orders, brothers and sisters. It's been given to him by the conclave of cardinals. At the Vatican, there are many issues that are being discussed in regards to the Cronoa virus that has been exposed and being released. Demolish, moreover, no one man Antichrist or Antichrist whose reign is to last for only three years and a half can fulfill the conditions of Paul's prophecy. How could he spring into being, climb to a height which mortal had never reached before? exhibit his lying wonders and deceive the whole world, compel all its nations and kings to serve him, make war with the saints and overcome them, and all in the brief period of three and a half years. Though the anti-Christian host had issued from the pit fully armed and mustered for battle, and had spread themselves on dragon wing to the four corners of the earth. They could hardly have accomplished such a feat. The awful visitation would have been overpassed before man had well known that it had befallen, and where would have been the need for the faith and patience of the saints, or for the cry, How long? And this is what the saints are saying, those that have been persecuted by the devil, How long? Will you avenge my blood? How long will it take to be for my blood to be avenged? The ground is crying now, brothers and sisters. This system cannot go on very much longer. Antichrist could not make his first appearance full grown. No, he couldn't. This would have been fatal to his pretentious as vice Christ. The first appearance of the true Christ was as an infant in the manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. And the sign and seal for the Hebrews was they would find him in the manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. That was a sign for the Hebrews. As for the three wise men, they would follow the star for two years. And when they would find him, they themselves would have endured two years. The man of sin is here. Not unsimilar must be the beginnings of Antichrist. He was working in Paul's day. He grew up and developed stage by stage and in process of time reached his full stature. And he was not to be destroyed to the far future epic of the glorious coming of Christ, Antichrist. The years of his life were to be counted in centuries. They were far to exceed the days of the life of man. They were to fill the period betwixt the time when Paul wrote and the appearance of Christ at the millennium. The system was to be presided over and necessarily so by a race of rulers who were to take their place in succession at its head. But in such, but in as much as there was to be identity in the system from first to last and it was to grow as man grows by regulated stages and inasmuch as its chiefs were to be linked together by openness of spirit and aim, Antichrist is spoken of as a corporate individuality. Antichrist Reformation Agenda is Laudato Si, HR 9, that has already fooled the world in regards to what this Antichrist is attempting to do. But the wise shall understand. Those are the masculines, my brothers and sisters. The wise are the masculines. The conditions of the prophecy, we repeat, could be fulfilled by no man, no one man, excuse me, 
however superhuman his power, or however stupendous his wickedness, whose rise, reign, and ruin were to be acted and over in the short space of three years and a half. We return to the majestic counterfeit so loftily enthroned, whom the blinded nations mistake for God, and are seen bowing in worship before it. He as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He is the Antichrist and the mouthpiece for the devil. Every one of them. Let us open now into a very key point here that many of us had attempted to see. As we view the screen, I'd like to share with us that the books are available, ladies and gentlemen. The ancient prophecies about the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. I implore you to obtain the books and get them and begin to evangelize. The dragon is the devil. The beast is Vatican Rome. The false prophet is the United States of America. The Pope has claimed to be God, first in words, second in acts. Let us listen to some of the words which have come from the great mouth itself, and next to some utterances to the same effect which have fallen from some of Antichrist's friends. Ladies and gentlemen, these books are available. These books are available by the case. There are 20 in the case that you can evangelize. Ladies and gentlemen, our Savior is looking for literature evangelists. Men and women that will not be bought or sold. Men and women who are strong and faithful. They will be able to endure doing this work part-time, full-time. Ladies and gentlemen, you may feel free to call the ministry at 540-370-1844. Or you may email daniel-revelation at juno.com so that you can learn how to obtain them. Learn how to do literature advanced work. We also have much other free literature to give away. But there are many who do not want to go out and work in the fields. Ladies and gentlemen, if coronavirus is here, then it's time to support the immune system and to feed your immune system, which is a preventive measure. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And this is why New Star programs have been prepared, ladies and gentlemen, to help us. Our Savior has a plan for us. We should not be a people that are scared to go out to the doors and knock and calling souls into the kingdom. If these souls in your community are not reached, that blood is going to be in your hands, brothers and sisters. And I'm referring to each one of you who are viewing this on Sabbath. This is serious. Our Savior is calling men and women who will not be bought and sold. Our Savior is calling men and women into his kingdom who will not be bought or sold. So what is the mark of the beast? Sunday is the mark of the beast. So what is the seal of Elohim? Ezekiel 20, verse 20, he says, I leave a sign between me and you that you keep my Sabbath holy throughout your generation. It's Saturday. Saturday is a Sabbath. Ladies and gentlemen, Sunday is not the Sabbath. Sunday becomes the mark of the beast when Laudato Si is finally passed as they're transitioning and presenting a false issue, false doctrines, which is H.R. 9. And so when it's passed in the Senate, the president has 120 days to sign into law. And if he doesn't sign into law, then that means we have more grace, more time to evangelize the message, the health message, and prepare a kingdom for the, and prepare a people for the kingdom in heaven and the new earth. Ladies and gentlemen, our Savior is looking for us to do this job. The angels are not going to come and do the job for us. The angels might pull you out of Babylon because of your stiff-necked, hard minds. They might pull you out because that's grace, that's love. But they're not going to pull you out if you're not going to be ready to give the message and to serve your Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, with all your heart, soul, and mind. you got many preachers, many, many cathedrals that are filled with thousands of people in them. But guess what? They're not keeping the commandments. Ladies and gentlemen, these last days, it's only going to be a few. Because the scriptures dictate it. The Pope has claimed to be God, and he's not. He's the Antichrist. First in words, in lies. Second in actions, which is a bunch of abomination, immoral practices. Let us listen to some of the words which have come from the great mouth of the Pope himself and others itself. And next to some utterances to the same effect which have fallen from some of the Antichrist friends his cardinals, his nuns, that they turn around as used as concubines and turn around and have illicit sex. Lasciviousness is in the midst of the Vatican. Coronavirus is in the midst of the Vatican. And it's ricocheted. The devil says, do it this way. But little do they know that it ricocheted. Now it's on them. Mercy. 
Pray for them. Sitting in the temple of God that is speaking as cathedra, as Vice Christ, the Pope has in the most unequivocal manner claimed to be God. To this daring pitch of ambition and blasphemy has he carried the parallelism or imitation. The true Christ is Yahweh. Christ is the Hamashiach, the Son. Therefore, the Vice Christ must claim to be God also. Sit in the temple, claiming to be God, dressed up and copycatted everything that the sanctuary shows, he copycatted the devil because he wanted to be God. He wanted to be Yahweh. But guess what? The devil is a created being. And his road leads to perdition where he will be annihilated, never to exist anymore, along with all his followers, which is billions of them. May you not be one of them. Theoretical rules. In the canon law, the Pope is called God. Dictrum Gregory the Thirteenth, <coughs> Distinct 96, Canon 7. Again, he is called Lord and God. Decretuals, Gogori, IX, Title 7. And again, Innocent, which is Pope Innocent, says in the Decretuals, speaking of the Pope, God because he is God's vicar or Vicar of Christ. The canon law and the decretals are called by Romanist writers the Pope's oracle. They are a true expression of the pontifical mind. To the same effect the papal casuists say as Christ was God, he too was to be looked on as God. So here's your Antichrist and here are all his followers ladies and gentlemen. These are all people who do not keep his commandments and are flattering the people with cathedrals that are filled with five to 10,000 people in the cathedral, all going to perdition because they do not want to bend the knee and they want to listen to all these false preachers. It's time to turn to the Bible and to find out what is truth because the Holy Spirit is to lead us in righteousness and in truth, unadulterated. The sacrum ceremonial has the phrase, the apostolic chair is the seat of God. The Roman Pontiff says the decretum of Gregory, not as mere man, but as true God, reigns in the earth. The Antichrist revealed, not to multiply instances in which the Pope calls himself God or accepts the title from others. We close by referring to a recent illustration. Sir Colin E. Smith, in a tour in Italy, found a book published in the year <clears throat> excuse me, 1794, with the title History of the Ancient Republic of Amalef, dedicated to the Vice God Benedict XIII, with permission of superiors de Gret Craig. 173. Question is, who is the Antichrist, ladies and gentlemen? Who is the Antichrist? Do you know who it is? Do you know who it's been? The Bible tells us. The only book in the world tells us. No other book will tell you the truth. Because it has been dictated by his apostles that were martyred for the testimony of Yeshua. <coughs> so does the Pope bear testimony to himself? A greater than he said? If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Question, who is the Antichrist? You see him right before your faces. So does the Pope bear testimony of himself? Absolutely. Laudato Si refers to observance of Sunday, La Eucharist and Trinity, Laudato Si. He has sought to support his claim to this great title by great deeds. Whatever God does, the Pope professes to do also. Focus. Does God require that to him every knee shall bow? Yes. So, to the Pope, he requires to be worshipped with prostration and kissing. Does God reveal himself as the only holy? So, to the Pope. He claims to be styled his holiness. Is God the only wise? So, too, is the Pope. He claims to be in what? Inerrable.
He claims to be inerrable. Did God plant his throne on the summit of Sinai and thence promulgate those Ten Commandments, which are the world's law? So too the Pope, he has planted seed on the seven hills in the character of the world's supreme lawgiver and judge. So a few of those seven nations is Switzerland, England, France, Portugal. The others I'll let you do on your homework. And he claims an equal authority and infallibility for all that he is pleased to promulgate. Ex cathedra, as Yahovah claims for the precepts of the Decalogue. Is it God's prerogative to pardon sin? The Pope assumes the same great prerogative. But the Pope doesn't have the power, nor the bishops, nor the priests. So when you go into the closet and you're praying to them, you've got a curtain that's separating you from each one of you, and you're kneeling down, and he's sitting down, and you're confessing your sins to him, that is an abomination. That's a sin. You don't do that. The only one that has the right to be receiving reverence and prayer and, for, and asking and pleading for pardon is Yeshua HaMashiach. This is who you go to on your knees or prostrate. He pardons the sins of the living and the dead. Is it God's prerogative to assign to men their eternal destiny? This too does the Pope. He pretends to hold the keys that open and shut purgatory. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and while he reserves his and while he reserves to his followers a sure passport to the realms of paradise, he consigns all outside his church to an eternal woe. Woe. In fire, does God sit between the cherubim and receive the homage of his people in his sanctuary? In closing, the Pope, seated on the high altar of St. Peter's, while incense is burned before him, which are frankincense, to calm the nerves of everyone, and the knee is bent to him, is invoked as the Lord our God. Romanists are accustomed to call the altar the throne of God, inasmuch as thereon they place the host. The use the Pope finds for it on these occasions is the is the not very dignified one of a stool of a footstool. He as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is what's happened here, and this is what's coming. For all the Catholics in the world, for all the denominations that are paying homage to the Vatican Church, Conclave of Cardinals, your role is going to perdition. All of you, your leaders, your members, your children, they're not being baptized, they're not being immersed. Ladies and gentlemen, what's happened here is that this system, this satanic diabolical system, has denied and removed all the key figures, key points for our salvation. So they want you to join their system, join their satanic worship, and take you to perdition. Our Father who art in heaven, as we bow before you, we praise you for your grace and your mercy. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Mm -hmm.